नमस्कार टुडे इज अक डे बिकॉज वी हैव डॉक्टर फिलिप विथस हु हैज गॉट वट इज ए फैशन फॉर इंडिया अ जर्मन एम्बासडर विद लॉट ऑफ वट इज ए इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन टू अ कंट्री वेर ही फील्स इज वन ऑफ एन इंडियन सी द वे ही ट्रेवल्स द नेशन and understands a lot about india and what we see india german we think of we see one of the most happiest two associations that we see for years where every year we see a growth so we see the recent economic survey and different surveys says that german business people are interested to invest in india mainly so what do you think the reason that so much confidence in germany to enter into india what do you think the reason for that sir? i think as usual and first of all thank you very much for having me and thanks for your kind words but as usual when it comes to india the reasons are manifold it's not one single reason but there are many reasons one reason i think that works well between india and germany is that the political systems are so comparable so germany also is a federal state with uh, strong state governments and um, german business knows that you know the state government can deliver a lot and that's what we see in india also so basically when germany companies come they know that um, incentives or you know discussions about investments can be led in the states and not only in delhi you can go to chennai or bhubaneswar or or ahmedabad to to get your business running and that is a culture that is very uh, comparable and that's therefore i think um, many business um, people feel comfortable um, setting up shop in india now you would say that there is lots of room for improvement still our trade balance is by far the biggest amongst all european countries the one between india and germany but it's still far away from what germany does with china so what we feel and what we you know our feeling now is that more and more german companies look at india in a more favorable way because they want also to, to de risk as we call it not put all their eggs in one basket and india is a very good example so i think we'll see in the years to come a very positive attitude of the german business companies so as you said because of the different states we have that all are uh, welcoming uh, especially international investment and especially the mm-hmm. countries like germany where you de- do you think the more investment you can come into which sector you feel uh, it's difficult to answer because basically we have more than 2000 german companies here 2200 actually um, who are doing business and you have it's it's covering the whole industrial field so you have big 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 companies like siemens or uh, or the car building companies but you have also very small and medium sized companies who have niche technologies that they want to um, develop together with india so my favorite example is always a very small company with 300 people you know very very small that they with a very very highly technologically highly um, developed product rotational tables is something you need for watch manufacturing or rockets and and they want to set up shop or they did set up shop in india and in pune um, because they want to digitize their business and i they feel that india is the right market to digitize their business so that's interesting because that means that you know the regard people have for the level of indian education and uh, innovation capacity the potential for creativity is enormous and and that shows that you know german business across the board will look at india right now we would like to know one especially in the uh, indo german agriculture market mm. development projects where mm. you had the mango uh, exported to germany mm. and so on what is the actual the activities behind that so i, I think that um, what is um, extremely interesting for us is seeing you know what can we do um, in order to enhance the uh, the trade between uh, farming communities um, so what um, can india bring to the german table as it were um, we talked about the mangoes earlier so there is the first batch of north indian mangoes being shipped to europe that's a result of a big big project um, between germany and india in order to reach the you know phytosanitary standards um, for the mango export they are very high and it's not easy but the mango growing uh, the, the cooperatives um, 
that grow mangoes in UP, they learned how to you know, reach this level and now we have the first um, mangoes being sent to Europe. I really do hope that this is a start only and we will have more mangoes from, from North India coming to Europe in the, in the years to, in the seasons to come. At the same time, we also uh, try to uh, promote uh, organic farming um, in India. We have a big uh, project in Andhra Pradesh to, to teach farmers organic farming. That also would lead to a more expert-oriented um, farming community and, you know, ginger, turmeric, cardamom, cinnamon, um, nutmeg, all these spices that come from India, when they are organically grown and certified, they have a market in them. So um, I would say that uh, there is a potential um, to export to them more than before. See, I think uh, German uh, is supporting India, especially in or organic farming, mm. especially you do something in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the technology or what are the way you are encouraging Indians to opt for organic? Yeah. So I think there are teachers that really, um, or the, people who know how, you know, what, what the certifications or the certificates, which certificates are needed to, to get the rubber stamp organic farming. And they are, you know, developing the way of, you know, as you know, it takes the time to get from traditional farming to, to organic farming, to teach the people how to, to move slowly, slowly, so that they can uh, come to a produce that is um, certified organic for the German market. It's, it's not an easy procedure also because, you know, we are talking to very small farming units here. No? It's, a, it's not a big farm of several hundreds of hectares. It's small land, you know, spice growing in other land um, where people have to be trained. And, and, and that's what we do in the, in the south of India. And I, I think that's a way forward to, um, to exchange or to, to grow the, the, the exchange between produce India and Germany. Um, also, because, you know, we are negotiating a free trade agreement right now and where agriculture might be partly, partially, uh, uh, you know, included. And that, that means that uh, you know, trade exchange is going much swifter, much easier than before. What is the shift in Germany mm -hmm. to organic agriculture? So I think there is a, a growing shift um, in Germany when it comes to the consciousness of the consumer. You go to any supermarket, even the really the discounter, and you'll find organic produce being offered. It is mostly a little more expensive than the traditionally grown produce, but um, people feel that you know they are more conscious of what they consume and they feel it's healthier. And it's also getting more of a contribution to you know fighting climate change. So um, I think now uh, roughly 10 to 15 percent of our farming is organic. Oh, that's fantastic. It's quite a great. And I also hear there is a trend set towards the agrarian uh, consumption than mm. the uh, non-vegetarian in yeah. uh, so, Germany. Uh, How do you feel about I that? I think what we see in Germany is that the consumption of meat is going down very clearly. Um, and um, that means that people see other options, you know, um, in the, 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 the diet uh, 20 years ago was very meat uh, focused and that's not so much the case anymore. So pork and beef, chicken has been um, less on the market um, and other, you know, alternatives like vegetarian uh, um, has been more and more um, on the diet. I think even vegan, um, you know, m movements are stronger in Germany right now. When you go to Berlin, um, you see many, many vegan restaurants all of a sudden uh, where you have exclusive vegan food. And, and that's, I think, a trend that will be um, continuing for. Okay, so if you think, what will be something that you think India can learn from Germany? Mm. In the farming, yeah, area, especially I mean, in farming. the farming area, I think um, India's agriculture is 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 very still a big, big part of the of the GDP of India. Is person-wise is uh, agriculture. So you have, I think, fifty percent of the population working in agriculture. Agriculture, sixteen percent of the GDP is agriculture. So there is a misdimension or a relation between. You know the, the the people who work in this field and the outcome is obvious so i think modernizing agriculture is very important for india um, you need um, a, a sort of a in many ways uh, new approaches to, to agriculture at the same time i think with small agriculture you can and organic farming that can be a very good source of income also so 
organic farming, I would say, is, is something the Indian agriculture should um, look into. And then there is something in Germany which is in the agriculture field very, very successful. That's this, the institution of a cooperative. So we have institutionalized cooperation between farmers. And that leads to the fact that many, many small farmers have one tractor. And this tractor changes, you know, from, from farm to farm. Or they have one, you know, special tool or special machinery they need for their crops. They share um, the costs for that and everybody participates. Um, I think what we've seen in, in UP when I went for this mango trip is there is a, a farmer's cooperative or farmer's operation um, like this already in place. But I think there is room for much more. When farmers sit together and try to organize themselves in the right way, they can save a lot of money in order to, um, in, in order to get better income but at the same time also get modern machinery in order to put, when, when you put your funds together. So do you think, is there something you can take from India for the German? Yeah, of course, there's always learning from India. <laughs> there's a lot to learn from India in many ways. Um, I feel that, you know, the, uh, the approach to food here is very different from them. So it's, food is more, is, is not considered a uh, normalcy and people, you know, the emotional value people have for agriculture and food is something we have forgotten on the way sometimes. I would say there is more consciousness about what food means in India than it is in Germany. I think we should go back to that. So I always think there's a lot to learn from India in many ways. <laughs> okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your word to Indian farming community? I have the greatest respect for farming communities, actually, you know, it's basically the basis of our living is farming. When you, if you wish, um, uh, India produces best vegetables and spices and um, fruits. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I'm very, very aware of the fact how important farming community in India is. I see the opportunities, I see the potential but I see also enormous challenges. Um, and I think um, the Indian government and the Indian farmers have to think about how to reform Indian agriculture. It's a very difficult, a difficult step to take. It's not up to us to say something about it that must be developed within India, within the Indian um, you know, communities. Um, but I think everybody knows that, that farming is still not where it should be in India in many ways, so that would be very good. Okay. That's fantastic, you see, that's what we have to learn from Germany and I'm sure the way he had been, uh, the ambassador has told us, the, see, Germany had been more into industry in India and I think this may be a start to engage them more into agriculture. Mm -hmm. So let's together make Indian agriculture something different in coming years. Thank you. Thank you.